Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today, we'd like to review the design area requirements when using the density area method for sprinkler system design in accordance with NFPA 13. Since we know we're in NFPA 13, we see that it's listed in our featured publications and we can click on the 2022 edition of NFPA 13. We know there's a chapter on plans and calculations and in our chapter table of contents, we can scroll down looking for the contents for plans and calculations. Look there, chapter 28 has plans and calculations. If we click plans and calculations, we're brought into this section, but we don't know where the density area method calculation requirements are. So we can use the search feature. If we type in density slash area, hit enter, we see that 28242 has the density area method. Clicking on that section takes us to that portion in the code and we can see that the first thing that comes up talks about the design area, where when using the density area method, the design area needs to be a rectangle, having the dimension parallel to the branch line of 1.2 times the square root of the area of the sprinkler operation. This shall permit sprinklers on both sides of a cross main. We notice that there's an asterisk and a link here for annex content. If we click there, we notice there's more explanation about this 1.2 rule for determining the design area of an NFPA 13 sprinkler system using the density area method. Reviewing this annex material gives us a better understanding of this requirement. We hope that provided some insight into the design area requirements for an automatic fire sprinkler system designed in accordance with the density area method in NFPA 13. For more information about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, visit nfpa.org forward slash link.